What's up everybody, Camro here, and welcome to part 53 of my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to be looking at fossil Pokemon. First, we're going to be looking at how to create our own fossil items, and then after that, we're going to be looking at the researcher event, who will take our fossils from us and turn them into Pokemon, and we're going to break down how it works. With that said, let's get into it. So, what I've got here is my test map, and what I have here is a little fossil that I've placed on the ground. In order to do that, I just did new event, I found a graphic from the outside default tile set, scrolled down until I found uh, this little doohickey here for a fossil, and if you wanted to, you could use this one for an old amber, but really, I just made a little fossil event, and it says it's a rare fossil, and then you get the item Helix Fossil, and it says self switch A on, and then it disappears, because when self switch A is on, it goes to the second page. Anyway, Helix Fossil, if we wanted to make our own fossil, we would do this first let's close and let's go into our game uh, folder go to pbs and go to items.txt and we look at our big old list of items here now i was thinking we could just make our own fossil that allows us to revive kangaskhan so we could call that like the khan fossil or something so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna copy this line here for the helix fossil which is item number 28 I'm gonna copy that and scroll all the way down and paste it. So this one will be our new fossil, which is instead of item 525 there, this will be item number 526. So now we just need to come up with a name for our con fossil. And when you see it in game, oh, <laughs> I'm spelling it all wrong. Okay, con fossil, and then this will be con fossils. And then how about instead of a fossil of an ancient Pokemon that lived in the sea, it'll just say something simple like a fossil of a Kangas Khan uh, RIP <laughs> rip. So the most important thing to note here is at the very end, after we've defined all of the text for our fossil, we see 008. 8 means that this is a fossil. As you can see, scrolling on up through all of this text, as you can see, looking at the other fossils, Helix Fossil, Dome Fossil, Old Amber, those are 008 as well. There are no other items defined in items.txt that use 8 as the type. And this is very important because the fossil collector will only accept fossils. So now that we've made the text of a fossil, actually really quick, um, you need to go back into your game folder and go to graphics, icons, and scroll on down through this, doo -doo -doo, and what I did was I really just took an existing fossil and copied it and pasted it to make the item 526. I think that's, uh, which one is that? Oh, well, item 526. So this is the image that'll show for our con fossil. With those two in place, it's just about ready to go, honestly. It's, it's, it's going to be that easy. Let's go back into our game now. Let's look at our fossil event. So instead of saying PB receive item helix fossil, actually, let's just give, let's just give us both so that way we can see. We can delete this mention of Helix and type in con. So now it says con fossil. So now when we interact with this, we'll get two fossils. And I'll modify this text as well. It's two rare fossils. Well, if I could type, and then he'll say lucky, because that is pretty lucky. You picked up two fossils out of that thing. Cool. So after we pick them up, we'll have the fossils in our inventory and then we'll give them to the researcher. So now let's take a look at our researcher, and then after we've broken down this event, we'll run it in-game and see. So here's our lovely little researcher man. He has three event pages. The way that his event logic works is when you talk to him, it'll be default at event page one, and this will be the default until you give him a fossil. When you give him a fossil, he'll go to event page three, and then when the fossil is ready to be collected, it'll go to event page two. So let's break down how all of that happens. So at the very start of this event, there's a very simple uh, conditional branch that they have set up. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. You could delete this and just have one line of text for the start. But the way that this works is the very first time you talk to him, he'll say, hey, I can turn fossils into Pokemon. And then it'll turn self switch B on, meaning that when you talk to him a second time, he'll say his second text. So he'll only say his first text if self switch B is off. 
and then it turns self switch be on so then he'll always say his second text which is aya you come again kind of weird anyway that's how that works and then he'll say do you have a fossil for me yes or no if you choose no he'll just say okay we'll see ya but if you choose yes then some fun stuff's gonna happen it runs a script command called pb choose fossil where it opens up your item box and prompts you to choose a fossil this is where defining it as uh, defining our item as a fossil earlier comes into play it'll only allow you to select pokemon items sorry it'll only allow you to select items with that id of eight and when you select a fossil well actually now let's go through this a little bit more conditional branch fossil being revived so essentially if you didn't choose a fossil then he'll say oh yeah let me let me know if you want um me to revive a fossil for you but if you did choose a fossil then it starts to do all the fun stuff this conditional branch is essentially making sure that you're not already doing one or it's it's like a fail safe essentially but this is the fun stuff right here it will delete that um fossil that you've chosen out of your bag and set the variable number three to the name of your fossil and then he'll say okay i'll see if i can revive your fossil so they remove the fossil from your bag when you give it to them and then they run this function which is very interesting let me break this one down this one's actually very simple as well what this does is it takes a, an item id and returns a pokemon so if and then it stores that into variable number nine um so if you give it a helix fossil it'll return ammonite if you give it a dome fossil it'll return kabuto all the way down to plume fossil and archon so we can add our own line here we can do comma enter and then we can type in con fossil comma space and that one will return we have to do colons in front of these kangas con boom easy peasy so if we give it a con fossil he'll give us a kangas con there we go and then after that it sets self switch a to on and turns switch 13 to on the reason it does both of these right now is because we want both of them on if self switch a is on and 13 is on then it'll prioritize page three which will take us here so now that self switch a is on and switch 13 is on and we'll, we'll be on event uh, we'll be on the third event page and he'll just say i told you come back later it's not ready yet and once we turn self um sorry not self switch once we turn switch 13 off then it'll go to page two because self switch a is still on and then the fossil will be ready to be collected and the way that this works is outside of the event so we've delivered our fossil to him and right now he's processing switch number 13 is on so we could use another event somewhere a lot of places um just do this at the door when you leave um like i can go show you the uh, actual default example right now um in it's pokemon institute here so sedolan city pokemon institute so you give them the fossil and then it turns switch 13 on and then on the door out they turn 13 off so 13 was on and then you leave now 13 is off when 13 is off that means the fossil can be collected you could do this somewhere else if you want to you could make it so that way they go have they have to like go across multiple maps and like press a switch somewhere else in order to turn on the machine if you want to um so you have flexibility here in how you control switch 13 but yeah turning switch 13 off no matter where you do it will then make the fossil ready to be collected again and when the fossil is ready to be collected again here's what happens so fossil being revived is greater than zero when you do this um essentially this is part of that fail safe i mentioned earlier um the variable nine is set to a pokemon and if it's ever not set to a pokemon like for example if you give him a fossil but the fossil doesn't like have a corresponding pokemon then you'll like you'll you can create weird stuff so what they did to handle that was just make this but for the most part for the way that we've already set it up it's going to work perfectly and you don't have to worry about that what we have here is variable nine is greater than zero because remember variable nine was set earlier to our pokemon and then he'll say where have you been i got your pokemon ready for you and then it sets variable three to the species get name or pb get nine so basically what this does is 
it gets the name of the species of the Pokemon stored in variable 9, which is our Pokemon. And then that sets that to variable 3. So now variable 3 is equal to the name of the Pokemon that we're reviving. And he'll say, hey, it was a variable 3, just like I thought. So he'll, he'll be like, hey, it was a Kangaskhan, just like I thought. And then they'll add that to our party. So PB dot get or PB get nine is still returning a Pokemon stored in variable nine, and then level one. If we wanted to, like this PB add to party, if we wanted to, we could instead change this to like level five, or we could change it to level one hundred. That'd be kind of crazy for him to give you a level one hundred Pokemon, but let's change that to five. So we will get the Pokemon that was stored in variable nine at level five. And then it'll turn the switch fossil being or rather it'll turn variable back to zero so now there's no more pokemon stored in variable nine and then it'll turn self switch a off if self switch a is off then we go back to the very first page where he's ready to collect another fossil pretty simple right and i guess one more thing that i should have mentioned the convert item to pokemon this is going to store it in variable nine so we give him a helix fossil and then he returns an ammonite and then that goes into variable nine easy peasy right and then like i said earlier at the end of this event if you give him a fossil or he's if he's processing a fossil but variable nine wasn't set to anything else and it's not greater than zero then he'll say i brought it back but it wasn't anything sorry <laughs> it's kind of dumb but um yeah you should never really run into that in a pokemon game unless you make a fossil but don't have a corresponding pokemon but we've done that if you give him a Con Fossil, he'll return a Kangaskhan. If you give him a Helix Fossil, he'll return an Ammonite. And then what I've got over here on the little side is an event where when you step on it, it'll say Fossil's ready now, and it'll turn Switch 13 off. Like I said before, you could do Switch 13 off anywhere you want. I was thinking it could be cool if he says, Hey, I need power for my Fossil machine. You need to go get it on Route 3 or whatever. And then you go to Route 3, and then you press it, and then that turns 13 off, and then you return to him, and he's like, Hey, you got me my power for my machine. It's ready to go. Here's your Fossil. Anyway, let's run this in-game now. Save our changes. And let's play this. Let's take a look at our, uh, take a look at our Fossil Pokemon. And if you wanted to, you could do this for any Fakemon if you're making your own new Pokemon in a fan game. So that's pretty cool as well. So, let's pick up our fossil. It's two fossils. Lucky. They got a Helix fossil. My favorite. A Con fossil. My second favorite. Cool. So, now if we go into our bag, we can see that we've got our Helix fossil and our Con fossil. A fossil of a Kangaskhan. Rip. <laughs> cool. Now, let's talk to Mr. Science Man. Hello, I'm a scientist. I can turn fossils into living, breathing Pokemon. You do have a fossil for me, or do you? I do. Which fossil do you want me to revive? Let's do Helix first. Okay, I'll see if I can revive your Helix fossil. Come back later. So now he's processing. His self switch A is on, and switch 13 is on. We have to turn switch 13 off somehow in order for it to be ready. Otherwise, if we talk to him while switch 13 is still on, I told you, come back later. Okay, well, let's go step on our event. Fossil's ready now. So now Switch 13 was just set off. Okay, what do you have to say now, Mr. Science Man? Where have you been? I've finished reviving your fossil. It was Ammonite, just like I thought. Cool. Would you like to give him a nickname? No, it's okay. There we go. An Ammonite has been added to our party. Yeah, look at him. He's so cute. Now, let's add a Kangaskhan to our party. We do have a Con Fossil, after all. Now he's back on his very first event page. What's he got to say? He says, Aya, you come again, because we have talked to him before. Do you have a fossil for me? Yes. Which fossil do you want me to revive? Uh, con fossil this time. Okay, I'll see if I can revive your con fossil. Come back later. So, let me check let's check this out. This is also pretty cool. If you want to ever see switches in your game through debug, you can go to, I believe it's field options, and go to switches. And you can do up and down, or you can do page up or page down on your keyboard. Page down. See, right now Fossil 13, or the Fossil Revival and Process is on. I'm gonna go step on this. Cha-ching. And then you can just do Escape Debug, or you can just press F9. Go to Field Options again, Switches. Oh my gosh. Switch 13 is off. That means he's ready to give us our Pokemon. Hello there. Our team is full though, so check this out. It was a Kangaskhan, just like I thought. You have no room left. Make room, and then come see me. Aw, oh, man. Sorry, Ammonite, I'm gonna have to delete you from existence. 
Debug. Delete. Rest in peace, Ammonite. You've just been obliterated. All right, Fossil Man, I've got room in my party. Can you give me that Kangaskhan now, please? Where have you been? I finished reviving your fossil. It was a Kangaskhan, just like I thought. Yes. Would you like to give me a name? No, thank you. Cool. There you go. Ah, yeah, you come again. Do you have a fossil? No. Okay. <laughs> cool. So, if you were making your own game and you wanted to add your own new fossils for Pokemon, like you wanted to have a Charmander fossil or a Squirtle fossil, or just have a whole bunch of different fossils, like let's say this game takes place in the distant future and all of the original generation one, like Gen 1, 151 Pokemon have gone extinct and you want to revive them, you could go into your items and make new fossil items for all of them and then make your fossil event where he handles all of them where you could do, you know, Bulba fossil for Bulbasaur, Squirtle fossil for Squirtle. And if you're making your own game, like, with your own fake mon, let's say you're playing Pokemon Uranium, you know, there's a Metalynx in there. You could have a Metalynx fossil. <laughs> you, if you're making your own Pokemon, it's really easy to do this. So this is a very easy system for you to take Pokemon and turn them into fossils. And then turn them from fossils into Pokemon and add them to your team. And then you can also change all the text if you want to. You could plug it in where you could have a different, like, he has a different personality. He doesn't have to say, I, ah, you come again. You can write in your own text there. So, this is the basic formula for how the fossil man works. I hope this video helped you. I hope that using this, you can make your own interesting fossil events in your games. This has got me thinking about putting fossils in stuff. I'm, in fact, I think I'd like to mess around with Pokemon Essentials and try doing some streams again sometime of uh, messing around with Pokemon games. So be sure to follow me on twitch.tv slash stream if you want to see those. And I'll also be posting up onto my, YouTube, my, onto my YouTube channel, so there's that. I got an Instagram where I'm posting pictures of me making stupid faces with my friends and family, so if you want to see that, be sure to follow me there. And if you ever want to reach out to me and ask me any questions, I'd recommend using Discord. Um, the link to that will be in the description as well. So once again, thank you all for watching. I appreciate you very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.